All right, this is a quick review of isotopes and mass. I'm going to go over a couple basic things really quick and uh, do a couple practice problems that you often see in chemistry when talking about these topics. So the first thing you want to think about when you're a lot of times one of the first things you see is the different symbols that are used to represent mass. One of them being uh, just the elemental symbol, which is this guy, and a couple numbers. So this is one way you might see an element's mass and atomic number represented, where this is the atomic number, and the top number is the mass number. And again, this guy's just the symbol. Another way you often see these guys is with um, their, their names and a number right after. So for example, potassium 40. And whenever you see this, what you're seeing is a potassium with a mass of 40. So when you break it down, this potassium has still has 19 protons. He has 21 neutrons and 19 electrons. That's what this potassium 40 would have. If we were comparing potassium 40 to potassium 41, for example, now it's potassium, so he's always going to have 19 protons. Neutrons will be a little different. Still 19 electrons. And since the neutrons are different, these guys are isotopes. And, and that's really what isotope is, is just different numbers of neutrons based on the uh, original element. And I mean, there's just different types of isotopes of elements. So one practice way of looking at this and trying to analyze the different categories and different characteristics of atoms is by looking at a chart like this and trying to fill in the blanks on a chart like this. So when you look at something like this and you see, okay, so this is an element where its atomic number is nine. Well, what's the mass number? What's the number of protons? What's the number of neutrons? And what's the number of electrons you're gonna have in that element? Well, you can automatically go, just based on the mass or the atomic number, you know the number of protons can be the same thing. So it's also nine. That's what the atomic number is really telling you, is that there's nine protons in that specific element. Most elements also contain the same number of electrons as they do protons. The mass number is just the protons plus the neutrons, so this guy is 19. Once you see that, it's pretty easy to fill in the rest of this. So here we have number of neutrons, number of protons, a mass number. 14 minus 7 would give us this number here, which is just 7 in this case. That is also the atomic number, same as the number of protons. Number of electrons is also the same as the atomic number. Or you could just say uh, the mass number minus the number of protons would give you the number of electrons. Well, actually, that's usually for neutrons, but in this case, it works. Don't always go by that. Atomic number for this guy, what would it be? Well, it's a number of electrons in this case, which will also be the number of protons. And then the mass number is just going to be based on adding, again, the number of protons and neutrons. So again, when you're looking at mass, another type of problem you often see is something like this. So in this case, boron, we're talking boron, which has two naturally occurring isotopes, boron 10, boron 11. Boron 10 has abundance of 19.8% has a mass of about 10.013 AMU. Boron 11 has an abundance of 80.2% with a mass of 11.009 AMU. How could you calculate the atomic mass of this boron in this example? Well, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is look at these percentages and multiply them by the mass that they give you. So whenever you multiply a percentage, first you gotta turn it into a decimal. Yeah, decimal. So that's gonna be turned into zero. 0.198, and we're just going to multiply this number by the mass that was given. In this case, we get 1.983. We're not done just yet. That's just for boron 10. We also have to do this for boron 11. So this is boron 10 for boron 11. 
who do the same thing. So it's 80.2%. So it turned that into a decimal. Multiply by the mass given. In this case, you would get 8.829. The last thing you do to actually calculate the actual atomic mass is you add these two numbers. So 1.9. 83 plus 8.829, that would give you 10.812, and that is our calculated atomic mass of boron in this example.